Alrighty. So I promised I'd make a quick video uh, changing the lining of my forge. The interior, the ceiling, the walls, the floor, everything. So I'll, uh, for this model forge here, uh, it's pretty simple. I just have to remove this top when it, and it's just four screws. So I've, you know, I sprayed a little WD-40 on each one because it's a little bit rusted out here in the elements. And then I'll uh, take those off. And for this one, sometimes I would take the burner tube off, but it's not necessary. You know, I just take it off to inspect the inside and make sure everything's okay, but nothing wrong there, I suppose. So. Okay, one more. So, this should just lift right off, and then so you can see, well, you can't see unless I show you, okay, <laughs> yeah, so you can see the burner tube, right, right here, right, the bell, bell reducer, the tube, and it just runs straight into the bottom here, and then just secured by these screws, one here and one here. So we don't need any, to do anything with that, so we just set that aside. And then you can see in the forge here, on the top, it's got a piece of what's more like kale wool. This is just to take up some space here. I don't remember originally this, how this forge was lined, because I've changed it around. I've had this for so long. But So I'll just pull this stuff apart and let you see. So I've got this piece, and then here is this the ceiling. It's actually not in too bad a shape, but it's uh, you know, it's cracked pretty good across here. So, you know, we're gonna make new ones of this. I'll set that aside, and then I'll uh, I'll take my camera and just give you a peek from the top down. So you can see here, there's this bridge piece here, and also one on this side here that's broken. So you can see it's already cracked. So those pieces, goodbye. And these are more of the, this is the original material. And I'll show you kind of the difference between this and the stuff that I'm going to um, use to replace this. So I'll set those aside. And then you know, pull out, lower this down. And let's pull out that floor. Okay. Set this back up. And then I've got a brick blocking the back with another a fire board right in front of that. So I'll take those aside. And then the, the floor, I actually had to space it a bit because the, uh, the floor ceramic was a little bit too small, so I just cut this piece of kale wool as a spacer. So here's the floor. Again, you know, I mean, I could just turn this over and use it on this side probably, but I just, I have enough material to do the whole thing, and I want to maybe change the way it's configured a little bit, so I'll uh, set that aside, and then the walls are like such, and you can see how there's a cut, their angle here, and you know, it sits like that inside, and so that piece could cover the front here. You want to make sure, you know, you're covering the, uh, the, the metal of your forge from the inside. So, you know, as that sits in there, like such, then there's a bridge, a piece that go, a bridges across this distance, front and back. So that's one side, and there's another, and then also I have, I think this was original, that there was kale wool on, you know, on the sides as well, and on the ceiling, so that's why I still have those pieces. So, that's out, and that's it, it's just piece called pieces of kale wool that I had on the bottom here still. Just kind of laid down there to fill in space as I, uh, as I kind of change the configuration. So those are out. So basically that's it. That's, you just left with a shell. You know, I'll set that and kind of let you see. You know, it's just an empty shell. That's it. Okay. This is the, uh, the board that I purchased 
to do the work. It's a high heat refractory board, and that should be plenty. That could be enough to do it probably twice. It looks, you know, it looks to be a little bit stained, but it's the outfit I bought it from. They just have a lot of offcuts sitting around, and it's just it's not used. It's just been sitting around for a while. And I think I purchased this board, which you can see is quite big. I paid maybe 30 or 40 bucks for that. So, and I can do my forge twice with that. So, you know, hence I'd like to change this out. And then uh, you can see here, if I tip my camera down here, the uh, this is what the original material was when I purchased the forge. This was half of the ceiling. You can see the, the uh, half round where the, uh, the flame shoots through. And what I've noticed is, is this material is more, uh, more granular, and whereas the newer, this stuff, which is, this is a piece of that, is, is much more fibrous, and I know it's impossible to see that probably, but um, you'll find that if you try to, when you want to cut this older stuff, usually, um, you know, a utility knife is good, cuts right through it, but with this stuff, I found that the utility knife just drags, and it doesn't, it doesn't cut it as well, and that actually, um, the guy I purchased it from, he recommends using just a, a saw. You know, so you just saw through this stuff, and it just saws real nicely. So, yeah, and I don't know, you know, what the reason is for that, why it's more fibrous, but this is very, very high heat stuff. I found it to be very good. And then this stuff is what a lot of people, I think, call kale wool. You know, it's actually a blanket of refractory material. And a lot of people will use this to line, you know, use thicker stuff to line uh, maybe a, a circular forge. You know, and have that around the outs, around the, the inside, and then they paste on uh, sort of a slurry, a high heat refractory slurry. There are different brand names of that, but I've, I've never used any materials like that. I just, I prefer to just use this stuff, you know, these harder boards. And then for the floor, you know, I've got this, I showed this before, I've got this pre-cut ceramic, high heat uh, refractory ceramic. So, and that'll function as, you know, I'll have that sitting on top of this material like such. So, yeah, let me get to cutting these pieces to size. Okay, so as I've shown, I've got the empty shell here, and I've already I've got my pieces all cut and ready to fit in, and I'll show you that. But then also the uh, the top, I took these I tried to I took these bolts off that secure the burner to the top plate. And I'll set that aside. And the reason being is that then I can uh, when I put the the new top. Uh, piece of refractory and I could then locate exactly where the hole should be so and then also just give you a look at what that looks like so let's yeah let's see here I've got that the first piece is see this jigsaw puzzle is the floor piece so I'll set that in fits in nicely okay next let's see I made actually these these two pieces of kale wool, uh, and they're just spacers because the uh, my floorboard, the ceramic board, was I had this pre-cut and it's a little bit too short. So rather than just space it on the side here, I'm going to make the walls come in just a little bit so that this should fit in nicely. I hope. <laughs> well, let's see. So basically, this is just kind of like that. You know, there's the main material and then this will be just a spacer on the inside of that. So set that in. Okay. The right side, in. Left side, in. Okay, so those are in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put the, the floorboard in, make sure it fits now. So I'll space that as wide as I can and slide that in. Yes. 
just a little tight, but that's what I want. I don't want it to be... Um, sometimes, if it was too loose, this board here, it would like, when I put a hammer in and I was pulling it in and out, it would make this move. That's kind of annoying. So, right, right flush. Good. Just in tight. Okay, so you can see. See how that is? You know, I've got the, uh, that fibrous board, and then I've got now the ceramic, uh, board to act as the floor. The walls are in place. And then these, I've, the only change I made was, is if you notice the, uh, the bridge pieces before uh, were, were, weren't as deep. I've made them deeper, uh, and what I've done is rather than have the, uh, the ceiling piece cover from front to back, I made these bridge pieces come up right to the top. And the reason being is the taller that these are, the less likely they are to crack. So that one is at the back, yeah. You know, the reason I've marked these pieces front, back, left, right is because over time the metal will warp, so it's not exactly square, and, but that's fine. And then the only cuts that I got that were not just right, were right in here there's a little gap, but that's not going to hurt. You know, you don't want the pieces to actually fit in too tightly because then they'll be more susceptible to cracking. So there's the front, so now you see how it is, there, then. The, uh, the ceiling with a hole already cut. And this is just from pressure from the uh, bolts hitting there. So that should fit in nicely. Perfect. So there it is. And then as far as this hole, I didn't have a drill that size. So what I did was I just found center. You know, I put the top on the thing. Whoops. Put the top on like such and marked it. And then I drilled, drilled it out. And then I just gently just get a, a rough a uh, file or a rasp would be better and just kind of gently work that around. You know, turning into circles gently or just cutting a little bit until you get your desired size. Or if you had a keyhole saw for this material, it would be good, but I don't. And then one last thing is I just recycle this piece on the top because I noticed when I put this on, there's, when I press down hard, there's a little space still. So, you know, so this piece will just fit as such. And this goes back on, and that's it. I just have to screw that down, and voila. You know, put the, uh, the burner back on, and then light her up. Should be ready to roll. Okay, so there it is, all done, and all back together. You know, one other thing I did change, I didn't mention, is that the, the very bottom piece here, this refractory, I, I extended it the full width of this. And before the uh, the wall pieces went down, and then that acted as uh, the main floor and put pressure against the walls. That's basically what helps keep the walls upright. But in this case, I'm using this ceramic, or some people will put a maybe a brick, something like this brick for the floor, and that will keep the uh, the walls, or at least keep the walls in place, keep pressure on them. But this this right here is sufficient. So that you know, I made extend the full the full width that bottom piece. So. Yeah, and normally in the back here, I don't normally use it with the pass-through or just occasionally. So on the back end, I just have an extra piece of this ceramic and then use a heavier brick to block that off like such. And then when I want to pa pass something through, just remove those. So, yeah, that's about it. I'll fire it up and see what happens. Um, sometimes when you change things like the uh, refractory or the, you know, the lining of your forge, you can change the dynamic so you just never know. Uh, another thing too is this here, I probably, when I make bigger hammers, I need this to be a little bit uh, taller. So that's why I've, I've actually uh, made my forge with this little bit of an arch. So I might just cut that part away right there. And, you know, one last thing is when using this kind of material, just be careful when you're cutting it. You know, be outside and with good ventilation and maybe, you know, wear a dust mask. And, and, you know, protect yourself because this is, uh, you know, the dust from this is not good for your lungs. Yeah, let me fire up and we'll see. Okay, so I, I just lit it up and something was not right. And I don't know if you can see inside, but the pristine white is now charcoal black. And I think I know what the problem is. You can see in the back here, just instantly, 
Look at that. Just blacken that up. And I think there's, there's either two reasons, I think, for it. And I think one is this uh, refractory board has been sitting around for quite a while, and I think it has a lot of moisture in it. Because I seem to remember having this problem before, and the first, the first uh, light up, it just took an, you know, uh, a while, maybe a half an hour, just to stabilize everything. So that could be one thing. And the second is, is the sealing, the hole. I forgot to expand that to make it just as wide as this tube. So I think some of the flame was actually shooting, it was coming down, hitting that, because it wasn't a wide enough opening to make the total flame come into the firebox. So some of it was going back up and then getting recycled and coming back down and somehow blackening that. So I'm going to light her up again right now. We'll see. Okay, I just lit it up and it definitely sounds good now, much better. I've got it dialed way down. And I think, like I said, I'm just going to let it run and burn off maybe any moisture in that board. But I, I really think that's probably maybe part of the problem, but not the main problem. I think it was the, uh, like I said, my ceiling didn't have a wide enough opening. And I, I just remember this happening once before. So I'm going to close that up. That's hot. Close that up. And then, uh, so I'm going to let that run and get up to temperature and then I'll show you that. Okay, we're back in business, folks. It was exactly what I thought, that opening. I'll try to creep in here and let you see. I don't know if I can burn, not burn my camera. Well, you can barely see it. That opening now, you can see a nice neutral flame coming out of there. Yeah, that was just way too small and it was making the fire stutter, go back and like I said, just do weird things and then blacken the whole inside. But like I said, I've had that experience before. And I think once it, you know, once it's fired up this one time, it will whiten those walls right up again. So, yeah, looking good, ready for work. You know, some people find setting up a gas forge easy and easy to run, but I, I find it to be very fickle at times. And once you get it running well, you know, you like it the way it is, but when you have to change that lining, like I said, it can just change the dynamic in some ways. And, you know, so, you know, you've changed the, the, maybe the interior dimensions, you've changed the, the shape of it. Uh, in this case, maybe the, the opening where the flame is shooting through. You know, there's a lot of different things to consider. So, you know, I don't find it especially easy. I have to scratch my head sometimes. But, you know, this has, uh, you know, been a great forge for me. Again, this is a uh, Diamondback Ironworks forge and just super reliable. And, you know, when I do have problems, I'm, I'm able to seem to sort them out. So, hopefully you found this interesting. I'll talk to you guys next time. Just a quick addition. I just turned this off about one minute ago. And then look inside, like now, how it's, again, it's back to being clean white inside. And there's a little bit of black around here where, the you know, the high heat can't reach, I guess. But, yeah, this is just the same issue I, I met once before so yeah back to good ready to forge ready to make videos